Cheers. Welcome to Culture Night. Where we drink fancy wine and watch movies that are culturally significant. And this is episode number two. We mm -hmm. may survived the first one and we're excited for tonight's movie. Yep, we apologize for a little bit of blurry video if you're watching on YouTube for the first episode. Uh, there's a little bit of issues with the lens and then also apologize for some of the audio issues in the in the beginning at least um our dog was licking a toy not herself for those of you who were just only uh getting the audio experience that was not her licking herself licking a toy she's been evicted yeah yes she is quarantined right now um and we are recording in our basement with which we just recently finished we're still working on buying um furniture and things that will absorb sound this week we have a um, nice carpet pad our carpet hasn't arrived yet but hopefully that helps a little bit with the audio and Less maybe echoey. yeah maybe one day we'll get fancy yeah <laughs> all right so let's jump into tonight what are we drinking what are we drinking oh, i'll leave that on me tonight um tonight we um we really liked last week's wine so we decided why not stick with the same thing and this week we are drinking the 2015 fat boys and Findel from tobin james and pasta robles not sponsored but could be if they want to be just putting it out there um we were pleasantly surprised by the zinfandel last week mm -hmm. um i guess because i don't really think of zinfandel as something that i love but um it's always fun to drink like the same wine in series and just see like the only variable being just the year to mm -hmm. see if there's any, any real difference but it's been a week so it's not right back to back but so. not a true scientific method test like we normally do but i will say when i opened the bottle i opened it up to let it um air out mm -hmm. um a little while ago and the um the nose was really great just straight out of the bottle lots mm -hmm. of spice warmth yeah getting like dark fruit like plum on mm -hmm. the nose i also get like a little vanilla i could see that It's very smooth. I feel like it's not as alcohol forward as, mm -hmm. as yeah, last it week. Yeah, not right in your face with alcohol at least. I almost get like a little bit of like really ripe banana. <laughs> His palate is a lot more refined than mine is. Just calling it like I see it. A little bit of raisin. I can maybe see the raisin. It's just, it's like overall, I just get like a really smooth feeling from it. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's very good. Yeah, almost like some oatmeal too. Interesting. That ties kind of into my vanilla. Do one more sip. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. Another great one, Tobin James. All right. And now what are we watching tonight? We are watching Never Been Kissed from, I believe, 1999. I did not look up the year beforehand this time. So I, with these movies, I try my best as we are picking them out to like look up as little information as possible so that I don't spoil anything for me. I like going into movies completely blind, not watching any of the, the trailers or anything. So just trying to go at it clean. So I couldn't tell you anything about it other than the fact that I'm pretty sure it came out in 1999 and it's probably some sort of romantic film. Well, you're jumping the gun a little bit on my questions. First question is, have you seen it before? I have not seen it before. <laughs> I have not seen it either. Or at least I don't think I have. It doesn't jump out to me as something that I've seen before. Um, and what do you know about this movie? Nothing. Um, yeah, I know it's like rom com -y. and it, it has a big name lead actress. Is but... it com or is it just kind of like 90s, like romance, when drama? I, when I looked it up on Wikipedia a week ago or more, when I was looking up a bunch of movies all at once, I don't remember, it was mm -hmm. classified as a romantic comedy. So I don't know how funny it is, but we'll see. Yeah, probably somewhere um, in the lines of like 10 Things I Hate About You or maybe a little bit less. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's very comedy. classic, classic 90s. Yeah, hope so true um yeah we decided we'd stick with something kind of loved theme because we were recording this the day after valentine's day it won't come out till next week but um something kind of cheesy and fun for mm -hmm. the spirit of love so yeah i think we're ready to dive into this movie unless you have anything else we need to talk about beforehand i don't think so done with podcast podcast business clarifying last week's mm -hmm. uh snafus but hopefully this goes a little smoother yeah excited for episode two let's dive in Never been kissed. Yeah, never probably gonna watch that again. <laughs> Not to spoil my rating, but like, I don't find that one rewatchable, interesting. Just yeah, it it was wasn't very great. I didn't have high hopes for it, and it was slightly under what I save save it for your what review. I thought. Let's start with still start with the wine. Okay, um, the wine. I'm rating one to ten. Um, this is not it. <laughs> I just smell 
like that was yeah. like this assessment. This is very different. This is the box wine, the after show wine. <laughs> um, I love that rebrand. Yeah. The uh, Tobin James, the Zinfandel. Um, uh, 5.8. Really? It was pretty unfor or pretty forgettable. Unforgettable? Unre <laughs> it was pretty unremarkable to me. Mm. I still thought it was very good. I'll give it like a, I'll go 6.8. It depends on like, it's the same one you gave last time. Uh, it, no, that's what I gave the movie. Uh, it depends on like what you're rating against. Is this like on a scale of like, you know, drinking like trash water to drinking like the best wine ever? Or is this like on a scale of like pretty good wine to like the best wine? So I'm like rating this as like, I don't think craft wine is really like a thing, but like, you know, from like winery wine, like, like mm -hmm. it was, I thought it, it wasn't was bad. It just, you know, it was, it was okay. I mean, I gave last week, last week's, I think a 7.4. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed last week's. So I feel like I should do yeah. a higher rating, but I feel like this week's was smoother mm -hmm. and I don't know. I liked it. This one had a higher floor, but also a lower ceiling for my enjoyment. You're a lot more technical with your ratings than I am. <laughs> you're you're going to put a lot more into that. You asked me for some thought. That's what you get. Okay. Um, the movie rating one to 10. 5.6. I was going to say 3.6. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Um, like from like plot line to just like the acting to the believability to everything. It was just not very good. It was pretty right. 90s. Like I get it, but it still just like was not, not that great. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I don't know that I went into it with a super high expectation. Mm -hmm. I just know I like, I'd heard of it. It was a title I'd heard before it, it was not something that was just like over the top, like like the graduate last week yeah you heard a thousand times even referenced in this yes that like i was not really expecting a whole lot so i think my rating is also based off of my expectation was not super high it was just very like very average to me let's give a, a quick plot summary for this yes so drew barrymore's character is a do you want me to read the wikipedia summary would that be easier i want to give mine and, and, then, and then, you can, then you can see the wikipedia okay. one holds up to mine she is Drew Bar Barrymore's character. Josie is a um, reporter, what editor at a newspaper, and she's tasked with going undercover at a high school where she is supposed to like find some sort of like drama story, whatever. And she tries to fit in. Is super awkward, like forcibly awkward. Um, eventually, is tasked with like getting in with like the in crowd, especially, and going to prom, and eventually falls in love with the teacher who then falls back in love with her. Then once he realizes that she's actually not 17, doesn't want to be with her, but then reads in the newspaper her story and then decides that he does love her. That's, I mean, it's a good summary. Yeah. I mean, just the first paragraph of the plot summary on Wikipedia says, Josie Geller is an insecure 25 year old copy editor for the Chicago Sun Times who has never had a real relationship. One day her editor in chief assigns her to report undercover at a high school to help parents become more aware of their children's lives. So the premise of the story. Yeah. And I will say that really, I don't know how much this gets into our other questions that really changed I mean, the whole. The story was totally different than what I thought it was going to mm -hmm. be. I was very much expecting it to be like a high school. Yeah, I thought she was going to be in high school. Yeah, but... I mean, I, I thought it was going to be like a true high school 90s yeah. rom-com. And her being 25 threw me off from the very mm -hmm. get-go. Is it just me? Were you like expecting um, Sixpence and the Richer Kiss Me to play at some yes. point in that movie? Yes. So, like, I feel, I feel kind of robbed that it wasn't played. I will say the soundtrack did not meet my expectation of what a 90s rom-com was. Yeah. It's on my notes there that this, but I'll talk about it now. This this soundtrack was very unremarkable. There were no like key songs. There was some it was, voice. Right? Yeah, at the end, for the most part, it seemed like it was like was original fit. soundtrack, but it didn't really add anything to the movie. Honestly, none of it stands out to me because I, I don't like it was not the the classic. 90s. Yeah, I feel I feel like for a '90s like rom com type thing, I want some like nostalgia going back. Like, mm -hmm. give me them some sounds of the time. Obviously, this was made in the '90s, about the '90s. Like, but give me some sort of like sounds of the time, mm -hmm. if if you're yeah. trying to be a '90s movie and it encapsulate like '90s high school. Don't just play a bunch of like nondescript, I don't know, orchestrated songs that aren't actually 
I can't even really comment because I don't even remember any of the songs because yeah. none of them except for the Beach Boys where I was kind of like, huh, mm -hmm. that's weird. Also because Drew Barrymore was in 51st Days which also had lots of Beach Boys in it, which was where my brain mm -hmm. went. And that's the only reason that stood out to me. Um, cultural significance. I feel like there wasn't really much. Like it was just a, one of another it, 90s. It fit into the 90s high school ish like 90s high school rom com. Yeah, where the rom -com actors were drama. all where the actors were all like in their late 20s playing mm -hmm. kids like that were age 15 to 18. Just yeah. Yeah. It was not one that I really like it's not something that's referenced a lot that's like refer like mm -hmm. that you hear about a lot. Yeah. But I I mean I knew of it from being a kid in the 90s like having heard the title at some point before but like i will say like because it existed like it was one of that like group that generation of like those mm -hmm. 90s rom-coms that it was it, it it itself didn't stand out but it would as part of the group like was mm -hmm. the culture significance it, of it checked all the boxes of those classic yeah. movies for sure um oops go back um is it what you expected no no not at all her being 25 Mm -hmm. Nope, not at all yeah. what I thought. I very much expected this to be her, like, high school, mm -hmm. like, trying to become popular, finding the guy that she missed the whole time type thing. Like, that sort of, like, mm -hmm. overplayed, um, like, plot, but it, it really kind of wasn't. It was... I mean, I, that, I think that's what gave it a few more points for me, mm -hmm. was, like, it was a little bit more. She was, you know, an adult going mm -hmm. undercover an undercover story like not at all what i was expecting this to be yeah i didn't expect like 21 jump street type like i'm going back to high <laughs> school um but it, it felt more like sleepless in seattle where like that was the um it's supposed to be some sort of like big dramatic like storyline thing that to me just was kind of like meh mm -hmm. like the, with the it was a little forced which speaking of that did they say the name of the movie in it I mean, maybe they said it in the beginning. It definitely was the title of the the newspaper the article. article. I feel like she said it at one point, but it was not as obvious as it is yeah. in a lot of... She talks about it at the things. beginning when she's like, I haven't been kissed or mm -hmm. something like that. Like, you've never been kissed? I think they probably said it in the beginning, mm -hmm. but fairly unremarkable. Um, were there any actors who went on to bigger things or were in a role you didn't expect? Um, I mean, there was... For being not as well known as i was like mm -hmm. it's not some crazy over the top movie that you hear about a thousand times it was a pretty packed cast i mm -hmm. mean the like every time a new actor came on screen i was like oh molly shannon oh david arquette mm -hmm. oh james franco like the james franco part was the weirdest to me because he really didn't even have any did talking he have a line? lines no i don't even think he, he said was anything. like he was just part of the entourage of like mm -hmm. the the like hot guy who just looked like he hadn't like it's like he like washed his hair in like bacon fat. It was just greasy, which I get was like kind of the thing, but also like, mm -hmm. I feel like it was kind of weird where it's like, hey, the the weird friend was like way more, went on to be like a much more popular, like mm -hmm. good looking actor and all that. Yeah. Um, but the John C. Riley part, Riley. did not expect that. He, he was in a much more serious he a, role. He had a bigger role mm -hmm. than I, I was expecting, especially when he first walked in the first scene, I was not expecting his role to be Mm -hmm. as much of a player in this yeah but i will also say like she starts out she works she's an adult working in this um like newspaper office and has all these adult friends and you know octavia spencer john c riley molly shannon mm -hmm. all of that and then it gets like really deep into high school that then they would flash flashback to the adults and i was like oh that's right she's an adult and mm -hmm. like to balance all of that out and then at the end when it's like all these high schoolers and these uh, like 40 year old adults together it was, it was yeah weird what's weird also is that like the the adults that were supposed to be playing high school ish age like like uh james franco drew barrymore jessica alba yeah i'm sorry we, we, have, she we failed was, to mention that jessica alba was in this but jessica alba actually was she of, was, she of was that age she was like 18, 18 17 ish yeah. whatever when that was filmed uh was weird that was seeing them and be like oh they look so old but then thinking like octavia spencer and uh john c riley feel like they haven't aged in like 20 years no absolutely they like reached not. that age and they just kind of held on like, honestly i feel like Oct octavia spencer looks better yeah like she she has aged well mm -hmm. from yeah, yeah. that's kind of that was, that was wild i did not expect to see her in that um how well did it age slash could it be made today how well did it age um 
I mean, I don't think it aged well in that, like, I feel like this type of movie is not made as, like, mm -hmm. s stereotype typecast. Yeah, they definitely made a lot of this, like, very similar vibe, a similar kind of, like, I mean, honestly, 10 Things I Hate About You was very much the same thing, where it's, like, but, like I, I feel this one was probably based on a Shakespeare play because they mentioned Shakespeare so much, and it felt very much like 10 Things I Hate About You, which was definitely mm -hmm. based on Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. Um, I feel like there were a lot of movies that were trying to like squeeze as much as they could out of like, here's high school mm -hmm. as told as a Shakespeare play or something. Um, but I feel like they're just not really made today at all. Um, but I think this, the storyline could be made today. See, I think the storyline couldn't be made at all today because I don't think it could have been made then. The fact that it's like, hey, let's go back and be a high schooler and infiltrate this. I don't think you could have even done that in the 90s, like That's with true. the fake birth certificate and all that you would have had to be in to true. enroll in school, look way older than many, everyone. And mm. how many high school, like public schools, you'd be like, yes, let's let this 25 year old in to be a reporter. Mm -hmm. Like if you're being honest about what you're, why you're going into school, yeah. like that's true. They would have had to coordinate with the school, that. which they clearly didn't. And they're, I don't know, I feel like kids would have been more suspicious, suspicious when there wasn't like a, mm -hmm. you go out to your parents' and house like, or anything how the teacher was like are you 17 on the very first day mm -hmm. and completely called her out and it was not one other time no one else was like oh i'm sorry are you a child mm -hmm. no you're a full-grown adult okay yeah you're I mean, not full-grown because she was not that much. she's really not that much older than the high school kids but i mean but she, you age a lot between she like age 18 and 25 that's being a pretty a, significant a successful copy editor at a newspaper in in the city of chicago mm -hmm. she had to have gone to college and have some kind of like serious credentials that she's has she's experienced should have experienced a lot obviously she's never been kissed so but I still there are some had, things she hasn't experienced but a hard would have had a hard time like not slipping up and in, in like the way she mentioned like oh i went to northwestern and like trying to rec recover from that i think like there have been so many things where i would have like messed up or mm -hmm. you know i don't know and especially for how awkward her character is, I feel like she would have slipped up the first day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that, I would have. I, the fact she that she was to able be. to hold it out that long is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Do you think the title fit the movie? Do you think the title fit the movie? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else you really would have gone with, besides like undercover high school or something like really, really generic obvious. and stupid. Yeah. I've like never been kissed. The fact that it. Kind of made sense there. It's still... And it doesn't totally give... I mean, obviously, it doesn't give away the plot of the mm -hmm. movie at all. What I found funny is they said the phrase 17 again a couple times oh throughout God, really? that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, that was a different movie. Uh, there are actually two 17 again movies. Different. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of them is a DCOM, so you wouldn't know. Yeah. Wouldn't know. Um, yeah, I guess it fit. I can't think of anything better. They probably could have come up with something better and like give a different title for that newspaper article, but... Yeah. Um, do you feel cultured after watching it? Not really, because I've seen a bunch of other movies of that same, like, genre. I don't really feel like I, I got much out of this one. Yeah, I was, like, I don't, like, I mean, watching The Graduate was something that, you know, you hear, I've heard referenced, again, it mentioned in this movie yeah. that, you know, it was, this was not of that level of something mm -hmm. I've heard about a ton of times or referenced all the time and all the different kinds of movies and tv shows but i feel like it did bring my brain back to like oh this is you mm -hmm. know that movie where the high school stereotypes are turned up like 10 notches and mm -hmm. like that like style of movie which i think is very specific to the 90s like the 90s were were like 90s rom-coms were something that ha aren't still really made as, as they were their as, own thing they were yeah, definitely their own thing they are their own genre of thing that it was it was nice to kind of take my brain back to that but it, I do not feel like I have gained a lot by mm. watching it. Yeah. So any other like notes or anything you want to add? I think those are all of our after show yeah, questions. Yeah, we can, we can kind of, did you take notes on? I on did. Um, did we answer what was, was the movie what you expected? Oh, was it what you expected? No. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Plot, I mean, cast, all, nothing. Not, not at all what I expected. Um, I think we might have answered that one though. Um, so for notes, um, I had who the heck acts like that, like the like the uh, the bullies in the beginning when they're like pouring Sprayton in her backpack and all of those, those things. At least the high school I went to, no one would have really done that. Like that's was over the top, like very caricature. That's I mean, but I feel like 
what I mean, especially like going into high school for myself mm -hmm. in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, I was expecting a lot more of that extreme mm -hmm. type of like bullying and stuff. And I think it was because of the fact like of movies like this, where I was expecting bullying to mm -hmm. be one thing and like, it was just like something very different. That's why I kind of feel like this whole like culture night, like this, why this kind of belongs there is because it was more of like, here's what the movies were like, mm -hmm. but that's not really what it was like. I mean, we went to high school just after this movie was made, mm -hmm. like two or three years. Um, that it's not really what I experienced. That I also had a note as um, I don't think any of the movie makers in the '90s had ever like actually seen a high school, or mm -hmm. like they must have all gone to private school or somewhere like some. I don't know because high school, at least for me, was not like that. I mean, you know, my high school experience was just something different, but <laughs> it was it was something. Um, but and like there were stereotypes and clicks and all that stuff mm -hmm. obviously yeah it was high school but like i feel like these 90s rom-com movies just like take the stereotypes and just like turn them like take them way way mm -hmm. way into the extreme to the point where like when i was in high school it was like this is not what i expected and even just her the way she narrates and what narrates the movie and what she expects of relationships and all those things she's putting everything up on this giant pedestal and I think these movies set up, at least me, I don't know if other girls of our generation felt this way, to think that like romance was this thing that was mm -hmm. just this like ah, golden mm -hmm. rays of light shooting out from them. And um, that like, you know, high school was kind of this like, you're either in this extreme group or this extreme group and just, I don't know. Yeah, and I think the whole like, the especially in the beginning, I had a note of um, like, never been kissed thing and like putting being kissed like on a pedestal especially for high school like she was talking about it as if like it was some sort of like you get kissed up like sparks fireworks go off it's magical you ride off into the sunset and i think anyone looking at your first kiss especially or being kissed in high school expecting that you're setting yourself up for disappointment mm -hmm. or you're way overthinking it, you're stressing yourself out like it's just a bunch of weird hormones it's nothing like you know anything like the the movies portray that to be it's a lot of awkwardness and mm -hmm. and i i really think like watching this as a 30 year old adult now mm -hmm. it's like oh this is why i th i thought x way until i was an adult and realized that mm -hmm. that like all of that stuff is not real life i mean i kept going through high school expecting like waiting for this kind of weird like what we saw there as high school like to ever exist but just nothing really like that mm -hmm. and i just like i feel like all these movies really like pushed you know romance and you know being kissed and like having relationships to this level that's not realistic and like not even enjoyable if you were even at that level like mm -hmm. i feel like at least for us like being in a relationship is just like hanging out and being friends and like this yeah. really like neutral like mm -hmm. there are some ups and downs but it's not this extreme thing like these 90s rom-coms portray that it's like watching these now as an adult in a really serious, obviously, because we're married, mm -hmm. serious relationship. It's like, okay, that's where my misconceptions come from are all of these 90s rom-coms where it was like really, like really angry and then really happy or like. Yeah. It, and so much of that also like, I don't know, way over dr dramatizes, if that's a word, like everything where like the whole ending sequence of she's talked to this teacher a little bit, like. All of a sudden, it's this. Meet me She's on the, talking to this teacher as a seventeen-year-old. Yeah, meet me on the infield and come, like, kiss me. And this is like this magical. This is like everything's gonna be perfect after this. Like, that's the not, grand romantic gestures. That's not how you like build like a, a solid relationship or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's more of like getting to know the person, talking to them, making sure that like, you're actually like, compatible, have the same interests, all of those things. That if your idea of here's how we here's how we fall in love. First, you have this crazy over-the-top romantic gesture that cannot possibly be replicated, and then you just ride off into the sunset, you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. And those grand romantic gestures just, like, don't happen regularly. Like, that's not a thing. No, if that happened, like, even in the 90s, if, like, this whole whatever storyline happened of, like, being kissed in the infield, like, even before the age of, like, Instagram, TikTok, everything going viral, that still would have been made news. Like that would have been a big thing, not just that happens at high school. Mm -hmm. Like that would have been in the Chicago Sun Times. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Like that was just way not normal. And obviously, movies are made to be about things that are normal, but still, yeah. it just seemed a bit, bit over out the there. top. 
Yeah. Um, my first note I will say is the '90s narration in the intro. Mm -hmm. But it was just such a like this is okay. We are really just leaning into mm -hmm. the '90s rom com kind of thing where she's talking about what's happening, and it I don't know. It just seems so cliche to have that to start with. That I feel like there was like some sort of almost like intro sequence with the movie too, where there was like some credits rolling in the beginning, which I feel like you don't really get as much That's anymore. True. Um, like not quite to the extent of like movies that are made in like the you know 40s, mm -hmm. 50s, 60s where it was like all the credits were in the beginning, but um, definitely had that that 90s uh, vibe there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. My other notes are like the cast was just way more stacked than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and then as a um, past teacher, I will say when her she's the new student and she comes in and the mm -hmm. teacher like puts the sombrero on her head and then makes her stand up and introduce herself and mm -hmm. just like really puts her on the spot as a new student. It's a real dick move. I, I would have never done that. But I feel like, again, it's like leaning into that like 90s, mm -hmm. like, oh, you're a teacher. We're going to pigeonhole you into this like you're really feeling awkward. We're gonna extreme version of what you're supposed to be that like no teacher would put some poor brand new student on the spot in front of the whole class. Like that is absolutely, yeah. especially in the last like 5, 10, 15 years, like absolutely not would you do that to a student, yeah. especially in high school. Like it's like such a dick move and like it almost gives the appearance that like teachers were never kids too. Like mm -hmm. any teacher of that, especially of the age that te that teacher was, would realize like, hey, when I was this awkward kid, I wouldn't have wanted all that attention. Maybe you know, like the teacher. nuns in the Catholic school might do something. I mean, maybe not with this, mm -hmm. obviously not with the like Mexican sombrero, but like they would not. Especially like it's her first day. Like, and yeah. they're gonna be like, oh, we're gonna go ahead and tell you this rule that you didn't know about. We're gonna humiliate you. And you probably didn't like know how to get to your class. Like mm -hmm. not, not very, not very believable there. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, <laughs> The spy gear I found comical. She got this tiny little like pinhole, um, like pin on her um, what, sweater. shirt sweater that's transmitting high quality video back to a van seamlessly with apparently infinite battery life because she like falls asleep the next day and like wakes up and like it's still transmitting. That's true. I didn't think about that. Meanwhile, this gigantic audio transmitter that she has too. Like even if that's the battery, not believable. And I just find it funny that they thought especially that was, in like, 1999. Yes, that they thought that was practical. Even in, even nowadays, like. To transmit with that like low latency back to the van, everything not Mr. Mr. Technology yeah, over here. Not not gonna fly. That's that was very uh very like nineties technology. Here's what we think is mm -hmm. possible type thing. Um, also, whenever they portrayed her back in high school and they had her on braces, I guess people like have braces back in high school, but I feel like that was very much a cliche. Mm -hmm. of the 90s like rom-coms of like oh when you're back in high school and you're awkward you had to be wearing braces because everyone who's awkward wore braces mm -hmm. and everyone who wore braces was awkward i feel like that was like a, yeah. a, a trope a, a cliche there i can say i was pretty awkward in high school and i got my braces braces off a week before high school started so i had mm -hmm. no braces in high school and i was still awkward got that mine you off know. right before eighth grade there were some people obviously that had it in high mm -hmm. school but i feel like for the amount that it's portrayed as in this rom-com and i also felt like like i understand why they did the flashbacks but sometimes they like weren't really like it kind of jumped into them. It felt like mm -hmm. a little. Not, I'm just it was hard not time super because seamless. Figuring out whether it was a, a flashback or not. And and why they were putting them there, I I don't know. I, I felt like it could have probably flowed better. Mm -hmm. it, I didn't I didn't love it. There was a couple times where I was kind yeah. of like I don't know why they're doing. I think a lot this. of times in flashbacks they've got like a weird like vignette around the ed edge or like a different like color profile thing going on. Mm -hmm. But it felt not. It was super not as obvious as I feel like it. Mm -hmm. At least it is nowadays when they do those they just, like, flashbacks. The braces were the only, I guess, real tell. Yeah. She was a she's very awkward. I mean, I don't know if she like uh, Drew Barrymore kind of grew or changed as an actress a little bit more, but I felt very uncomfortable watching her. Obviously, her character was supposed to be really mm -hmm. nerdy and uncomfortable, but it felt very forced, especially yeah, the first half of I her trying yeah. to be like, I'm gonna try to forcibly be awkward, and it got a little better maybe, but yeah. Like you said, it might have just been her, like, quote-unquote growth. Mm -hmm. um, with the call-out to Mrs. Robinson that you mentioned earlier, I yes. felt very smug being like, oh. Yes. We, We've we, been cultured. We understand that reference. Because yes. we just saw uh, The Graduate last week. And, I mean, I did know that what that was in reference to before last mm -hmm. week. But, like, really understanding... Also, I have not yeah. been able to let go of that movie this whole past week. I keep going back to it and like <laughs> thinking about it more. And it, I mean, I don't know that I will be as reflective this week about this movie. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of, eh. but like that was way different than I was expecting. And all week I've just been like, oh my gosh, 
Mm-hmm. But to actually hear it referenced in something, especially the week after we watch it and being like, oh, I know what that it's is. It's much more culturally wow. significant yeah. than we... It hits, it hits different now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, hot seat. The famous couple's um, prom thing. If you oh, and I were <laughs> at prom oh. together in high school, which famous couple would we been? I've not thought about this yet. I just put it on there. If we were together, if in, in, prom. in in high school, if like when we were in high school, or right now, if we were going back to high school, I'll say right now, if we were going back to high school, at, at their prom, those, their theme, those are different things. Their theme was famous couples from history, and everyone was dressing up as them. Um, you can think about that for a minute while I go to the next uh, <laughs> questions, but have that on there. Um, uh, her dress, I don't know where she would have got that over the top like Shakespeare dress in the nineties. No yeah, no Amazon, no Etsy, no anything. She would have had to go to like some like medieval renaissance the ren fair thing to get that i guess but um very odd and the teacher dancing with the quote-unquote student at prom i feel like would have been way uncalled for there would have been like we talked about this while we were watching it yeah i was like can you imagine like think about any of the teachers in your high school dancing Mm -hmm. with any of your classmates in high school everyone would everyone would be like oh my god and like you know all the immature high school Mm -hmm. boys would have been like ah like just yeah. totally calling it out like absolutely not. there would have been scan- so much scandal so many unrealistic yeah. no nope, absolutely not so weird um no. her brother's soundtrack the, the fake love um that that didn't everyone hate her um i have a note there because at prom everyone's like hates her because she messed up the whole like prank they were playing on the mm-hmm. other nerdy girl and then, like, a minute later, they're at the baseball thing, and everyone loves her. And he's like, oh, man, I hope she finds love. Which, like, I don't find very believable there yeah. for girls. And, and even, I mean, like I was saying while we were watching, high like, girls mainly. you know, these girls want to be there in high school, and they want to be on the prom court and all of this stuff. And then this 25-year-old gets named prom queen. Mm-hmm. Like... Wouldn't you still be kind of mad about that? That, like, yeah. you lost your chance to be prom queen because some reporter came as undercover into your high school? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, people would be more mad at her than they would have been after they processed it. After they processed it, they would have been like, no, nah, I don't want this person anywhere near me. Yeah. And then the inappropriateness of, then she like scheduled this big romantic gesture with a teacher who's gonna be making out with a girl that he thought was 17, but actually is older, like in front of the, the entire- At a was, high school baseball game. Entire student body, all that sort of stuff. Like, I feel like the like parents nowadays especially would have shut that <gasps> shit down. Ooh. The uh, 2020, the 2020s parents are, yeah. they are a... Uh, Would have definitely like put their foot down on that. I mean, I know we are parents in the 20s, but we have, yeah. we have small babies. We're not high school parents, but yeah, parents these days would not let that fly. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, my only other note, and then we can go back to this. <laughs> Your really stressful question. I have yeah, no idea. I can't think of anything. <laughs> I don't know what it does. But I will say I did like the quote um, when she, I guess she says it at prom. I don't remember exactly when it happened. Um, she said, find out who you are and don't be afraid of it. Like, I feel like I, I kind of wish I had knew that in high school. I feel like that is good advice from someone who is out of high school and mm-hmm. like talking to her to her younger self, but she's like talking to all these kids is like, you know, if you're the nerdy kid, like don't care what other people think. Like mm-hmm. high school, every time I think about high school, especially my high school, it's like everybody just cared so much about stuff that was just so stupid, so terrible. Yeah. That but like- it, For the most part, I feel like my high school experience, people didn't care nearly as much about the, the drama. I was with the, like, not a cool clique by any means, the runners, like we were mm-hmm. just, who we were and i feel like we didn't take anything too seriously and obviously there was still like obviously high school drama um but i very much agree with that like sentiment of like find out who you are be comfortable in that in that person or within within your group and who cares what anyone else Mm -hmm. thinks or i just feel like that's like a really solid advice of you know something that i wish i could i mean not that i really like i never tried to be cooler than i was i kind of knew where i was and was mostly okay with that but there were still things where it was like i obviously i was a girl in high school like Mm -hmm. you you try hard to be something that you're not at some point that to just that that's i feel like that's just really good advice that of of the whole movie that was the thing where i was like yeah that was nice i liked that Mm -hmm. i liked that um but as of who we would be if we were what famous couples from history from history 
I, I honestly like am, am drawing a blank from all that. Yeah, we are not um, what Malibu Barbie or Disco Barbie or and King Kong and uh, mm -hmm. what's her face. We're not anybody from Shakespeare. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you anybody from Shakespeare off the top of my head besides Romeo and Juliet, and that is not us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we are us. We are uniquely Andrew and Sarah. We'll answer this next week on the podcast after yeah. we thought about I, it. <laughs> I will spend all week thinking <laughs> about who we could possibly be from. I got nothing. I don't know. I think we're just who we are. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to be anybody else. We would have gone as, as ourselves and been the most important people at prom. Yeah. And we would have found out who we are and been not afraid to be it. What was her quote? Find out who you are and don't be afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah. We are us and that's... <laughs> no, we'll find something better for, for next yeah. week. We'll think about this. But... <sighs> well, I know I'm not sleeping at night because I'm like, like <laughs> rolling through all the couples. But... I mean... Mm -hmm. Okay, we're moving on from that. Mm -hmm. I am glad I've seen it now. Am I as glad that I saw this as The Graduate? No. But, yeah. I mean, I've seen it. I can move on to next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm making a list of like must-see movies, this is definitely like near the bottom. Of, oh, for sure. Um, but we've seen it now. We, I feel like I've seen more 90s movies, than, 90s rom-coms than I had before. Mm -hmm. And uh, And I think that having... I, like kind of like you were saying there the 90s rom-coms are kind of all similar that i think having seen this will be something that we can reference when we watch another one and mm -hmm. kind of they all will build on each other in certain ways and we can kind of reflect back and i think it will build this library in our brains of like you know what 90s rom-coms are yeah. that i think i'm excited that it will pave the way for the other ones that we're yeah. gonna see prefer, that'll probably be better i prefer 10 things i hate about you to this but Yes, I don't. It's, I mean, I've, we've seen it once. I don't remember it quite yeah. as well. I was not watching it as much as uh, mm -hmm. closely as I was watching this. But um, yeah, I'm excited for the next '90s rom com. But we'll see. Will next week bring another '90s rom com? We'll see what we feel. Yeah, it's a, it's a day by day thing <laughs> for this podcast. Cheers to culture night. Yes, cheers to culture night up too. We'll catch you in the next one. See you next week.